mostly old, but uh, Turner's actually 16. Wow. Well, they are in kind of a bit of a rebuilding phase right now, going from established power to, you know, this kind of situation they find themselves in. Now, Flynn holsters the hammer, was thinking about it. Healy would have been very capable of catching it. Tinkler points where he wants it, goes instead for the nice, quick, cheeky break to Flynn. And instead goes the break, Lawler has to chase it down and gets there comfortably in the end. That was, uh, he had to really put the jets on to finally finish that one off. He spent a lot of time looking at it, not enough quite time running after it. So Pelt able to get the score to make it 4-1, which is a nice recovery, especially after a few turnovers there. And at one point, Hashley was starting to get that flow going for them, which is not what Pelt want. They can't let that happen. And that is a second break for Pelt. Mm. So it's looking pretty rosy for the, uh, the boys and gals in green. The Limerick crew. The sons and daughters of the Shannon. The Viking Irish. We have the Treaty City. We have Ireland has such a history of getting its ass kicked that genuinely we're known as the Treaty County because one time we got a draw and that's what we're proud of. Limerick battled the English to a draw. And it wasn't really a draw. It was like a stalemate in chess for us and for them. Moralizing, and there we go. It generates the block. It's a numbers game. You make them throw enough passes, one of them, they're going to lose a little bit of focus. Devastating for Bologna. Grant picking up the disc. That could be devastating too as Niall McCarthy climbs a ladder and plucks down a cloud. I don't think there's any better description for that grab than that. It just... I love it when you get that sort of almost freeze frame effect when someone's at the apex of their jump and it's just sort of like just a hang time that they get up there. That was beautiful. So you know what? That is another break of score for Pelt Mixed. Pelt Mixed showing up and showing off. They had tough time yesterday, but at moments can show their real talent, their real ability. There is quality throughout this Pelt side, if I may say so myself. Not you know, go challenge for the title quality, but foundational quality you can build upon and if what maybe want to target mix, because Pelt generally would, at the European level, target open and women's more. But they're showing that they can, you know, they're good friends. They can connect, they can mm -hmm. gel together. This is looking, I mean, we've seen some really, really nice pieces of offensive work from Pelt, just giving and going between the full seven players on the pitch. Mm -hmm. And that was just what you want to see in mix. But we knew coming into this game, Pelt had the edge. They had the better record. We already talked about the fact that Hashlish got rolled by Salah Spills, 15-1, whereas Pelt lost 15-6. They did get rolled in the latter half of the game, pretty much sort of, you know, but they, could, they hung tough for a little while, which to me shows they have a little bit more quality. And then they, had, they did have a tight win, 15-13, over Monkey from Grenoble. So uh, they actually lost that game 15-13 to oh, Monkeys from Grenoble. Go. Okay, well, I was misinformed <laughs> by you. <laughs> Not kidding. But, um, but then Watch there me was lie about how well Pelt did? That's <laughs> impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of, yeah, so the other side of the record for, uh, for Hashish is a 15-7 win against Kuss Bradshaw. But we know the Italians are not always the best at, at coming together the same way that Pelt have shown thus far in this tournament. Hugen floats it up and Hannah Wilson gets big and smashes it away. Beautiful stuff. Now, if he caught that, I would have said that that was an assist. <laughs> big Lorcan. time D. Yeah, look, and they're trying Mark to get Fanning. involved. He's not wearing his jersey. He did bring his cleats, but you can't play for Pell. I'm sorry. On your heart, fantastic thrower. Really central to this mix team becoming competitive. As Moroni, unfortunately... Maybe sucked in by the defense, reads that one wrong, sails over his head. But we've seen that McCarthy Maroney connection, like throwing to each other. Especially McCarthy throwing big shots to Maroney, he's very fast. Hoogan thinks about the team, probably would have just sent it into your hand to his back if he threw it. Front corner, this is a dangerous position, and that is a tall man, Mark Fanning, trying to get in the way. Lovely low throw. A man, and he throws and goes so frequently, which I love to see, because I just don't think enough of that happens against zones. It's the best way to play against them, in my opinion. Bit of the old dribbling. And that one just falls away from Weigel. Unfortunate. 
So on your heart, picking up the disc. Isolation on the front of the end zone with McCarthy. Tries to go for the break and pulls it off. Very unfortunate for one side. Very fortunate for Pelt as Dylan's able to collect it with the clap catch. Not a big fan of the kick spike, but that was amazing focus and concentration to just really in that absolute bubble disc. But just unfortunate stuff for Hashish Airfarko right now. They're just, it's just not coming together for them. Those are the breaks sometimes. Johanthij is... are the breaks. <laughs> Johanthij is read the play beautifully, knew that Anya Hart was trying to hit that break side to Dylan Ryan, picked it off, but difficult in the end. Just a quick reminder that uh, Pelt did start on offense. So once it goes to half, we'll go back to Hashlika. Which at 6-1 probably isn't the most relevant piece of news, but you never know, it could become more relevant. Hashka are nothing if not consistent in their pursuit of improvement. And that's kind of what led them to the situation they're in right now. They had a lot of talented players. They did a very, well, I was personally very impressed with uh, how they did it at Worlds in 2018. But since then, they have gone through that classic rebuilding process. And Christina was talking about this earlier. I'd love to get your opinion on it. Like the unknown with the two year break and COVID and how that's impacted teams differently. Have you seen any particularly surprisingly good or surprisingly not as good as they used to be teams? So I actually have not had a chance to voice this at all on a live stream, but actually it's a really interesting one to see the difference in the impact of uh, the, the kind of break from COVID on the different divisions, right? So okay. actually, we've seen, certainly in the States, have been more vocal about it, a lot of women not returning to the field. Lots of women have decided, with the shutdown of Ultimate and the fact that you can no longer have FOMO, to do things like start having children. What a world we live in where it's only the women who decide that. <laughs> well, it's only the women who, who really have to ruin you know, their give bodies, up their bodies <laughs> yeah. and have to rebuild them <laughs> afterwards after creating a brand new God, human. That is so insane that y'all can do that. That's insane it's to pretty me. Cool. It's pretty it's cool. It's insane. It's in a good way. In a good way. Absolutely. In, and we're still learning stuff about it, right? We're still learning about how it all works still. There's so much to discover about the mystery of the amazingness of women's bodies. However, it's been, yeah, it's been really interesting. I haven't necessarily seen any teams that have come out and massively shocked either way. It's more that I think teams are having rebuilding seasons. They've maybe lost a couple of people. There have been actually a surprising number of relocations, I've found. Mm. There are a number of, especially, I mean, I'm biased. I know more British people, but there are a couple of people at this tournament that I've been like, hey, how you doing? Playing in the strip. I've never seen them in before because they've just decided, you know what? And I think that's been a thing. It's been a chance to review and change, change your life. Maybe play more frisbee, maybe play less frisbee, maybe move somewhere else. It's all a bit of an unknown, but that's exciting because anything could happen at this tournament as a result. As we see, Art Fanning almost got a handlock, but Haman rescues it. Really tight play starting it off as this, this is the pull set them up in the red zone immediately. So a bit unfortunate for the Pelt D-line in that regard. But when you've got that big swatting body of Mark Fanning pestering those handlers, they're going to have a rough time. Haman hoping to step through. Pushing, prodding. Like the Vayner can gets it back himself. Hugen. Johantages. And Hugen trying to get it back to Haman. Does eventually, but Pelt of using this zone have pushed Hashlika back further. Great step through D by Johan Egan. And Pelt immediately looking to attack. Liam Grant loves that give. Go, go him. And penetrate through that front set. Hugen, Haman. Working together a lot. Like you say, Hugo and Haman, Johantage is saying those names all the time. And then when they try to involve some people further down the field, they're not as warm, not as ready for the game. As they go for the quick pop over the top, and it works. I believe that is some clean hold? Yeah, I think that was a clean hold, actually. <laughs> Charlotte Moore getting the score in the end. So a bit of um, a conciliatory score. You know, it's, but I'm liking the look, look at this pelt, pelt side. You know, not from a, just the, the body language is there. They're looking pretty chill, but it's that kind of like they're happy, they're patient, they're playing the zone, and then they're just finding the opportunity and just snaffling, chomping away at this. And they've taken chunks mm -hmm. out of Hashley Shirtbuckle. I still think 
the German side can come back from this, whether they will come back from this, uh, I hope it's not. difficult. You're, you're five points down coming into the second half. You've got no momentum at the moment. To kind of give you guys viewing this stream, because we're now live, thank you for your patience. It's not that windy. It's not that windy. It's a little bit just to keep things interesting, but the conditions are not cause nothing that should cause this level of ultimate player problems. It's just that little bit of a caress of wind. So really, this is a case of, you know, good defense and perhaps not being Huge quite. shot by Tinkler, testing that defense immediately. And Flynn collects it for the score. Exactly what you're talking about. And that's half. Yep. Easy. What, like, what, that was two passes? If even, yeah. I think it might have been one. Well, there but you go then. <laughs> that's that's exactly, but no, you're so right in what you're talking about. And how could they start to clamp down on the defense? That's that's a bit of a haymaker to throw. But Hashley could come out on offense and another clean hold for them. Maybe they start to fight their way back into it. It reminds me of, I'm not sure if it was the quarterfinal at Worlds where they played Philadelphia Amp and they went down 8-2 at half but then traded the entire rest of the way with some truly, in fact, broke them. They won the second half. I believe seven, well, it couldn't have been 7-6 because the other team would have got it. It might have been 8-7 they won the second half. So they do have that fire within them. At the top yeah. is the problem. It's there. They didn't quite have the depth to really hang tough with the amp the whole time. And you're missing players like Nora Vilkening, who is just, just a powerhouse of an athlete, especially for this side. You can tell they're missing some of those people that they're just that extra little cog in the center of their offense. They have, they have the, the, you know, the hand set is working really well for Hashish Erfurkel. Although I think you've got to be getting frustrated. If you're those cluster of players that are just having to patiently swing and swing, even though they're very experienced, they're probably very mature individuals, no one likes that. Especially with that kind of, you know, playing against a zone. And then as soon as there's a turnover, you've got all of the excitement from Pelt, they're just going for it. They're not playing necessarily the most conservative small ball. <laughs> and so it's kind of that, you know, you're doing all the right things. It's not coming off. And then your, oppos your opponents are then just having a great time. It's not the most fun thing to play no. against. We've all been there. We are very emotional people, the Irish, and the, the Limerick folk even more so. And... Uh, when it's going well, it can go fantastic. Like Salas Bills games, I'm not saying Pelt are good enough to beat Salas Bills, but they showed they were good enough to hang with them for a while. And it wasn't as simple as Salas Bills turned it on and got really good. Pelt started shooting a couple of toes off. But that's the nature of being a fiery team. And like I said, everybody on the team is a maniac. <laughs> like, one or two are pretty calm. Like, e Egan's fairly calm, but like, some of them, legitimately crazy. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be careful about who we're calling, who they're calling crazy exactly. <laughs> but you kind of got to love it, though, because it's that oh, it's I, the I interesting thing, it. right? So people that play in areas where there's only maybe one ultimate team to play for, there's only one club, unless you're going to try and sacrifice your entire life on, this, on the altar of ultimate and, like, drive several hours or even, like, to a different country to play. It can be really unfortunate if your local club does not fit your personal brand of how you like to play Ultimate. So you get some teams that like to yell at each other. Not my thing, personally. Right. I don't need to be yelled at for my mistakes. I'm intelligent enough to know that I messed up. I don't need to be yelled at. I need to be left alone to go deal yep. with my stuff. Yep. But if you've got a, a collection of individuals like Pelt who are all that same vibe. Well, I would say to you, just do what we did, which was we made our own team in Limerick. And we're like, all right, what vibe do we want this team to have as soon as we had enough players? Which is, it but was a great thing. thing. But, you know, you have to be open to clubs evolving over time. There wasn't a huge female component. And developing a female side to the club was a big focus at a certain point. Again, I really want to give credit to the people like Dylan Ryan, Christy Tinkler, who were champions of that, both in the youth side and making it a more wholesome and welcoming environment for women to come and play in. You know what my favorite thing about that is? Go on. It's men actively being involved in recruiting women and developing women. There's so much, I think, uh, misunderstanding that it has to be driven by women. It doesn't have to be. You just have to listen to them when they tell you things. And you can hear McCarthy's cries of despair as Moroni covers for him downfield, tries to get there in time, and he does! Big time block from a big time player, Kieran Moroni. And you've got to love 
Aaron Eichstadt immediately being, that wasn't a foul he got there first. A lot of respect. But a bit of finally, that little tiny bit of luck, that tiny bit of hope for Hashish Erdferkel, and it gets completely smothered. Just when it starts to go right, it goes oh so wrong. Sexton, Healy. Back to Fanning. And Hashlicker on the turn, coming out in his zone, which is uh, impressive. Oh, and that one just batted away with impunity. Your antages just stepping through like, no, I'm mad about that now. <laughs> which, I, again, I can also respect. I think that's what they have to do, though. Like, at the moment, there's, there's so much on the offense that they had to just patiently, boringly swing it around. They need some Aggie D. They need to find a little bit of fire bit and be like, nah, attitude. Scream back at them. But the turnover is going to stand. Yep, very fair. It's, it's been a very fair-minded game. But yeah, I want to see Hash Earth Eccles D get a little bit more feisty. Surely Hoogan is just looking, looking to send it to her man and does so. They're going to call him not in. McCarthy really tried hard to stop it. Lots of stutter stepping working out for them. Back to Hoogan, back to her man working it towards the break side, and the man just doesn't stop moving, and it's so difficult to contain. Lovely break, McCarthy committed too much on the force, and the man just gets to keep running it, and a beautiful shot to the end zone. Weinreich? Yeah, Weinreich. They eventually do find that continuation. It seems to me that's the thing with this Hashish I feel like that, that hand connection is so strong, they're almost psychic. They know whether the, the, their player is going to go next, but there's then that little bit extra yard gaining and that's what the pelt zone has really effectively done it stopped them making those nice easy yards on that bish bash bosh they're doing bish and bash they're missing the bosh ah uh, yes and you can't just have bish bash no you can't have bish bash so come out hold which they'll be quite happy with that did seem we were talking about the fire i honestly think a man just went no we're scoring this because he genuinely didn't stop moving at any point there Started in the front of the stack and just took off and didn't stop. Every other pass for about 12 passes? Well, coming out 8-2 down at half, that's what you have to do. You need to go and get, okay, 0-0. Nil, nil. Second half, 0-0, nil, nil. game to one. That has been a criticism of Hashlick in the past, of being a bit one-dimensional when things got really bad, relying on the Pirate and the Kraken to get them out of those situations. And it's worked to an extent, but when it doesn't, things have crumbled and... And when you only have one of them. We only have one of them. And if you're trying to blood this new element, like these kinds of lines from Hashlicker, big fan of. Because this is the kind of people they need to be stepping up and taking over the next stage of the club. Absolutely. Christine and Kion gets it to Flynn. And Tinkler, who has already launched a few deep, but decides against it. Flynn. Two, two men who do have cannons for arms. The zone from Erdfrek. We'll see how they do. McKeown, Christina with the disc. Phenomenal playing against zones offensively. I was, uh, I've captained a few teams in, of few iterations of Pelt 2 that she's been on. She was so important to us on the O-line. Playing in the open division against second teams because she's so patient and she's great at that throw, find the gap and go. So she immediately looks for the pop, moves the defense, and then stays as a safety valve. Knows what she's doing at all times. Flynn has Tinkler. Tinkler wants it. Instead he goes for the easier option to McKeown. And back. And they've switched to a match defense as they've gone past halfway. Tinkler has it. He's going to want to go break side, but instead just back in the middle to Flint. Yes, who launches it around to Lawler with a comfortable score. No, it's going to be a call. It's going to go back. Elongated chat here. Talking about the temperature, checking on the weather, being British, very yes. important. Of course, nobody here being British. No, but it's very cold. Definitely very Gets cold. Gets Lawler in the middle. Throws it to Flint for the score. So it continues to be a clean hold for Pelt.
So if you are with us in the stream, thank you very much for joining us. If we're live with you, or if you're watching back, you can consider becoming a Patreon of Ulti TV. It's been a, uh, a fun morning as we've been trying to get you sorted, linked up with access. But if you want us to have better quality Wi-Fi, better quality, well, more people, more hands on deck. We're currently doing this for the love. I can see one of our cameramen, Edge, having a great time, wrapped up in about seven layers, having a great time, bobbing around. But if you want to help support this stream and make it even better, I mean, it's pretty amazing as it is, you can get yourself to Ulti TV's Patreon. So search for Ulti TV Patreon on Google. It will direct you to exactly the page that you need rather than us trying to read out a web address. But you can sign yourself up as a monthly sponsoring member. Like all these other cool creative projects that people sponsor, like podcasts and whatnot, you can give your hard-earned schmeckles to us. To we make know how sure much you want those schmeckles. Schmeckles, schmeckles. I, I love the word schmeckles. It's great. I only recently learned it. <laughs> However, you could sign up to not just be a basic biatch. You can be a greatest supporter for the price of probably, maybe, depending on how affluent your city is, two or three cups of coffee a month. <laughs> Recommend you do so. And thank you for everybody that's on the stream that has already supported. We love our patrons. And we're going to try and get you more access, more benefits, more cool stuff for supporting us. As Hashlicker are trying to get more access to their offensive players, spreading it around a little bit wider now. Haman again working with Johan Tijis. Hugen's gone downfield. You can see Weinreich coming back into the middle. There's the spread. Further options downfield, but Pelt do a good job of getting across and stopping them. You might not be noticing, but Bogloska goes free now. She's been working tirelessly downfield to try and be on the right timing for those wings, and Pelt just kept sliding across and shutting the door. That time, the Hawk always going the wrong direction. Yeah, hats off to the uh, the women of Adverk who are not getting the disc a whole lot. It's one of the things I've actually really liked about Pelt is that they have got some female handlers that are sitting in that space and going to work really, really well. Whereas... You know, it looks like Erdfeckel are just playing dude ball, but it's just because their core handler set happened to be dudes. A lot of dudes in the core handler set missing some of the better, the more established throwing females of the team, and the pelt zone is working quite well at stifling the downfield efforts of the cutters, like Bogloska. <laughs> and Weinrich, that's a lovely shot across to O'Sullivan, who then matches it with another arcing shot across to Healy. And can she make it all the way to Egan? Nope, holsters it. Smart decision. McCarthy, not known for them. Goes for the big one all the way, arcing across. O'Sullivan is there. And that's unfortunate. Ooh. Oh, I'm really not sure what happened there. That was, uh, it wasn't one like he wasn't looking at it. It just, uh, just fluffed it. Yeah, I was so confident, Rolkin, that I actually had tapped the score button on my stats board. Ooh, maybe you cursed him. That could be what happened. Hoogan. You had to just very, very much a foul. On the immediately loud contested, retracted. Yep. Not happy about that one. And that's Hugan. They're doing a good job working together. But if you're going to be running in those short spaces in between zones, you're going to start hitting people as they're working all the way across to the other side. And a travel call, I believe. So Hugan. Gets it back, he's looking. Spreads it across to the opposite side. So a bit more involved. See, I'm not the biggest fan of the way that the Erdfakul set is not double overloading the deep, but great pressure on that one, trying to knock the disc away. You need a lot more than that to get the disc off. Healy shoots it to the end zone for Darren Scully. Great score. And so 10-3 now. Help mix sitting pretty with a seven point cushion. That's a lot of goose feathers. <laughs> and you take some kind of a princess to feel a pee through it. But maybe they've got something special left in the tank. I would understand a lot of people be like, all right, this game's basically over now and might be thinking about seeing some of the other quality ultimate that we have available. As yeah, we are we're bringing two fields all day. I know there's so much ultimate action to watch. And thank you very much to uh, people that are viewing this live. We do love our viewers very, very much. I uh, particularly enjoy uh, Connor how you can get involved in the chat saying it's Emma Sexton's world. The rest of us are just living in it. 
we are but passengers to her ultimate glory. But what a ride to be on. Indeed, but next up on this field, we will have, well, both fields will have some women's division action. So we'll have 3SB versus Love. Oh, those are two so, good games. Yep, and uh, that'll be Ali Thomas bringing you that one with Liam Grant. Then two good on the Astro pitch, we'll be having Cusp Shout versus Valkyria. Uh, gotta say, doing play by play for that one, super excited. It's gonna be feisty. It's gonna be spicy. It's gonna be all of the exciting words that I can currently think of to describe an ultimate match. Hot tamales on a cold day, which is what we want as we're here in Belgium, XEUCF 2021. Hashlik Erprickel coming out quick and looking for the deep shot. They take it. It's contested, but I think they just wanted it. An absolutely fantastic, great put. Eichstadt had the steps on McAuliffe and he just couldn't make it up. Oh, absolutely. That is trust and faith in Eichstadt. Like, he was covered when he started his cut. It's just that power in the legs, opening up the hips, just churning your way trust and faith and you know they put another point on the board you can't do that every point unfortunately for the hash uh, at Fekul O-line you just can't maybe not that exact set but you can play with that urgency they That's caught true. it and they went for it although I don't know I mean thinking back to that play what do you reckon the stall was when that got released oh like one I knew that guy was going to hug it before he got the disc back I think it was Hugen I might be wrong on that um looking from over there it was either Hugen or Johansson who just picked it up I just there was a look of like I'm doing this now passes it immediately goes like Haman is quite famous for and it's great to see other members of Erdferkel doing it oh there can't be more than one Connor Hogan in the world that's They're that's such too unusual much. names <laughs> How many, I, I mean, no, there's no one else in, in Ireland called Connor definitely not it's no, okay, we'll, we'll have to get, so we have two viewers at the moment called Connor Hogan. Not sure which one is uh, the hoagie, but we'll have to get them in a sock dressing match to determine the ultimate... The ultimate hoagie? <laughs> the ultimate well, if hoagie. any of them are still in Ireland, I think they win by default as Ryan gets it off Tinkler. Looking to play some quick give goes. Gives it to McKeown, middle of the pitch. She's got throws, but she's also got brains. Waiting for the right opportunities to come and not forcing anything. Lawler. This is a nice active mark by Muller. That still count's got to be getting high. Eventually he gets it to McKeown. And I would say just in the nick of time. Not a lot of clogging going on right in front. Lawler getting low to pick it up. Hits Ryan. And he shoots one to the end zone where Flynn is waiting to comfortably collect it for the score. have to say Hashish really trying to put the pressure on that one doing a decent job of kind of you know taking away some of the options that Pelt wanted but it's just like a knife through butter at the moment just just cutting up this German mix side and you kind of hate to see it the rain's just started to fall down as I'm sure you're already aware from seeing the pictures on the screen and it's now going to start getting even more difficult the slippery discs to keep hold of the just the the soggy clothing that you'll now be wearing, which is the much less heat, kind of, you know, no, cold proof, heat wind proof, wind proof, that's a badger. Ah. There's, I used to know the, the official percentage difference for the difference between wet clothes and dry clothes for stopping you from getting cold. But I'll have to look it up. So we'll bring you that information soon because it's going to be real relevant today. It's The morning was forecast to be eh, dry-ish. We've had a little mm -hmm. bit of smatters here and there. But the late morning to central afternoon, so at local time here, half past 11 more or less, it's going to be wet, wet, wet. Feel it in your fingers. Definitely feeling it in your toes because your socks are going to be sopping. Well, Pelt have gone truly, madly, deeply in this game. And that's why they are seven points ahead on an established power in a rebuilding phase. Which is, every club goes through it, either that or they die. So it would always be better if they could rebuild. I imagine some people may uh, be having certain thoughts about the other option now after a drop pull. But happens to the best of us. Exactly what you're talking about. It's wet. It's windy. It's, it's wild. <laughs> wet and wild. Fanning oh. has heart to the right. Still looking for options. Healy working hard in the front of the end zone. Hart goes for the break to her. Look at that catch. Healy just one of the best receivers with no Y chromosome in Ireland for my money. 
Fanning. And then again, Brianna just working hard on that isolation front of the end zone. Quick, reliable, score. Am I right in thinking Brina Healy of the gold medal winning gear team? Probably. Yes, I think so. Might have picked up with them. Again, the Healy sisters, very, very good. Emma and Brina both playing on the spell team. Very good female players in Ireland. Traditionally Cork based. But uh, I actually don't know the full story there. It was one of those things where everyone on Pelt looked at me and went, you don't know? I was like, oh, good. I get to look forward to finding this out later on. But uh, we've all been rather busy in different directions. Rebel hoping maybe to be able to enter a rebuilding phase. Because you see it a lot with clubs. Like They get the first generation. And then if you're able to get a second one, you're like, cool. So we can keep doing this. That's not how it works. It is so difficult to maintain a club over a long period of time, a sustained one even with youth training, even with programs like that. So building something that lasts is incredibly difficult. And why it's so impressive when you look at things like Bologna, who are institutions by this point. But that is so down to the reinvestment. You know, it's not the, you can't just take the profits from a club success. You have to reinvest them. You have to have those players who are going to be your Davide Mori, going to be your Laura Farolfi all I those people that reinvest in the success of their club they take a hit they still want to go see, this is the thing right this is one of the, the problems you have with the London scene out of the UK right you can go and play for a better club you can join someone else's gambit yep. you don't have to develop your own homegrown ultimate grassroots ultimate that gives people the opportunity to develop what That's a what D want. by Christina McKeown sniffing that out catching it on the second attempt Full intelligence. Mark Fanning, Hirely's backhand. It works. And Kieran Maroney for the score. Phenomenal stuff from Pelt. Sorry to cut you off there. Oh, you no. were making an excellent point about the <laughs> London work. But that's my girl, Christina McKeown. Wow. I really, really enjoyed the fist bump. And you were right to interrupt me. <laughs> that was beautiful. So this is the thing, right? Like This stage in the game, 13-4. You know, like... We're not quite so excited and compelled by watching the game maybe every single pass because it's not that nail-biting opportunity. However, Pell is still flipping, giving us some stuff to get excited about. Oh. Hashish, a lovely team. Lovely team. Very, very good quality ultimate players. Some newer people, as we've already said, they're trying to bring into the fold. They're trying to develop a bit of the shape of this game because we obviously saw that first half pretty much uncontested. Pelt with breaks all over the place. An unanswered run of five solid points in the middle of that first half. We had a little bit of trading. But this is the Pelt Siver. Turn the green back on on our screen because it's a light green when it's a uh, like a lurid, lurid green on the stat screen when there's a break. And we're back in that mode now for Pelt. Drenching our screens in green, exactly how it should be. McCarthy at the center of the handler set. Traditionally not his position, but it seems to be working. Liam Grant, a huge fan of give and go and very effective against zones. You can see either side, Healy. Vaughn on the opposite side. There's McCarthy with, he loves a big scuba, but that one didn't work. Really well read by Ekstad. Hoogan down the line. Gehantages back to Hugen. And this is some really nice, quick, flowing play. Haman, no option immediately available. They opt to swing again. Hugen. You see Pelt immediately putting that zone right back on. Somehow that gets past Darren Scully. He might have gone through his legs. Hugen, Haman, not slowing down for a second. They're going to call travel on that. Just a bit of discussion about whether or not that was a travel. But it's so difficult when you have players like that who use their body to get to the break side to move the disc as much as they use their throws like Haman does. You're going to be flirting with travel constantly. And that one swept up. I can't Ooh. actually see past the crowd of people what happened. That was a, uh, a bit of a jump on the back for the Hashish Erfakel player. But well brought in. <laughs> But a little, little apology there on the way out. Just probably, just did, this is the thing, right? As we said with the, when we're talking about Salah spills and how they were a bit 
uncomfortable with the fact that Pelt had got one past them at the late stages of the no, hashtag uh, got one past them, sorry, at the late stages of the game. Pelt got several past them. But that's the kind of commitment. It's the commitment of even when you're about to go 14, no, 13-5 up, sorry. But you're, that's a huge deficit for your opponents. You're still gunning for it. You're like, no, I want to get a block. Maybe, well, maybe you should have like had a little bit more vision to see the position he didn't have. But you got to go for it. You got to go for it. That's the thing. Pelts at their best are just permanently going for it. And that's a kind of attitude that I think is really ideal for a club that's in their in their position, in our position, I could even say, which is trying to establish yourself at an elite level, pushing to start making the top eights when available. But realistically, it's about showing up here and keeping your head long enough to have competitive matches. And a big part of that is just being positive when you've got no other reason except for the fact that you don't want to be negative. And Pelt carry that through when they're doing well, and when they're doing badly, they still try to do it and sing the songs, shout the jokes you see. Christy Tinkler working with Lawler. McKeown back to Tinkler. McAuliffe's just kind of drifting around in front. Quick pop, now, and that is going straight into the ground. Tinkler's taking on an ambitious throw through the middle. It would have required quite a lot to work out. As we see Huger, Hugen, who's had a really impressive game. He's done a lot for this team. A lot of their brightest sparks come at, thanks to him. Lovely shot to the end zone, and that's nice little play and a break. The first time that Hashlick have scored two in a row in this game. Oh, it's, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put myself out on a limb. It's too little too late, but I'm so excited that we're getting a bit more excitement from Hashish Erfekel. It's especially, lovely to see, and... Especially enjoyed, sorry, the look on Mojo's face. <laughs> Muller, when he caught that disc, because there was a little bit of a bobble on it, and kind of the, the look of like sheer just pleasure of like, oh, thank goodness I caught it. I just love it. I also think that enthusiasm that's coming through, part of that is it was Julia Turner who got the score. 16 years old, having those younger elements of your team who s remember what it is to be excited by this. Yeah, I just made it 13-6. I just scored at the European Championship Finals on stream. That's a big deal, and you should act like it's a big deal. And talking of big deals, we're saying about Breen Healy, right. and I kind of, in my, my brain, I hadn't quite checked my facts. Have now. She was indeed on that squad in gear mm -hmm. that won the women's gold medal, and then met the president of Ireland. Yes, Michael D. Higgins. Pretty cool. Miggledy. Has great dogs. Um, he does have and wonderful then, dogs. Uh, has great poetry as well. Also got the runner-up position for the European Breakout Player of the Year. Deservedly so. Incredibly talented young woman. One to watch. Yep, and as well as her sister, Emma Healy. Never want to overlook how effective she is also as a cutter. Some clamps for hands, really, as a family. Sexton. I mean, it is her world. Is it like the, uh, the robot in Futurama? Yep. Clamps, and there's Egan chasing it down, but just slightly misread it. Needed more float and less zip. Yeah, not sure she was quite expecting that, but she was miles free. <laughs> so, Hashlicker with a chance for another break. Gonna start putting together a couple of points, maybe? Who knows? Burning down the line with venom. Thailand. Back into the middle. The advantages. Thailand. Working hard. There's the big shot all the way deep. It's dropping always in the wrong direction. Turnal was close. But not quite enough. Flynn gets things started immediately. Lawler shoots through the middle to Tinkler. He has Egan. He's in there to pull the defense. Flynn thinks about sending it, relaxes, gets it back to Sexton. As Pelt settled down into a bit more of a shape, hit the break again to Lawler. And Tinkler goes up the line for the open shot and the score, 14-6. Well, we are nearly at the end of this one. And quite a confident performance for Pelt. They really enjoy this as they go into their next game against Red Bull the Red Shots, another team that is hunting for its first W. Unless they managed to dig one out against the Monkeys. Earlier on, Grenoble Monkeys. 
But this uh, a win here, and if Hell can win later on, puts them in the middle of their group. So still a chance to progress a bit further into the tournament. Indeed, and we are. I think we we stay in pool play for the mixed division much longer than we will for the either two, the women's and the open division here at this tournament. Bit of a nightmare of a schedule for the uh, tournament organizers in the women's division. Seventeen teams. Why? <laughs> Because participation is important, and, you know. I suppose. I, I could see that. 17. We, well, it's the strange thing, isn't it? Because normally you have the full set, because anybody that qualified would be like, yes, I'm coming. I'm going to be there. But surprisingly, quite a few nations are missing. We don't have any Russian teams this year, which for the women's team, uh, women's division especially, is very, very sad. Mm -hmm. We don't have any of the Brits, apart from Clapham and Smash Deep. So there's no... There's, no you know, that's a lot of the strength yeah, yeah. of Europe. You don't have Iceni. You don't have the likes of Bristol. They would be pretty handy additions. Bristol would be doing very. Bristol kind of need, have they really announced themselves on the European stage yet? Because you would have fancied them to take it all if they were here this year. Well, it's yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Although we're seeing some of the uh, the Bristol players are going to be moving away from Bristol in the uh, coming yeah, season, yeah. moving to different locations. So that might be. Uh, might be a pinnacle missed by them not turning up here. A man throws a beautiful arcing scuba all the way over to the top, and Hoogan was waiting for it. Loving this confidence. And that's an, I love that kind of a flick, and a man just stretching out one hand, offhand as well, grabbing it. Keeping it gloved, though, for the wife. Hoogan gets it back. A man. And that's such a delicious break, scooping it right through the center. Weigel was waiting for it. Gets it to X that, and then the pop into the Hoogan. That's what I expected to see more of by Hashlik at Erdferkel. It's nice to see them now able to connect. There was a little moment that made me a little bit sad inside, where you saw Weigel just stopping in the center of the field, really having to be like, oh, no, I need to get out of the way of the handlers. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's good to see at the late stages of this game. Obviously, if you're a pelt, maybe they're taking the foot a little bit off the gas. We're not seeing quite so many of those very close bids. Which is good, because there was perhaps a, a bit of extra contact than was needed on some of them. We like a little bump and grind in Limerick. Bit R. Kelly style. But Terrible person. You know, it's now, it's now time to probably put this one to bed. I think we... What do you think? I'm going to say pelt, clean hold, <laughs> scoring off a deep shot. They're definitely going to try. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's going to be uh, pelt... Clean hold, scoring off a pop in subsequently after a deep shot. <laughs> All right. Let's see. <laughs> see if we, and then Hashley could just snap off a six point run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that happens, it will be horrible for the schedule because we've got another game on the stream here shortly for you. But. My oh my, wouldn't that be, <laughs> It'd be entertaining? To watch? I wouldn't enjoy it at all. Christina McKeown picking up the disc, floats one up to Tinkler, he takes it down. The Tinkle Toes with the big shot deep. Kieran Moroni. Oh, he's going to have to battle for this. It drops. He reads it perfectly. He's on the end zone line. There's McAuliffe. He has Brianna Healy. He has Brianna Healy. He just pops it to McAuliffe. His call on the foul. I was praying in my head. I was like, please, please, please get a little bit further. Like two more meters. <laughs> and then, it, then, I can, then I can beat Lorcan. But fair call, mate. But they're well, still going to hit in. Yeah, yeah. Now they've we've had stoppage. Mm -hmm. Well, they've not got a lot to do. They've got one more pass, probably. Fair. You're with your. You could. You can. You it's basically a handoff, you know, to get it over that goal line. Just break the plane. Smart defenders, though. They're waiting for that all the time. Oh, for sure. So he has Lawler, and there you go. Pop in. For the score, Pelt win 15 7. Clearly, I'm Nostradamus of the 21st century. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It has been my distinct pleasure to be Lorca Murray and joined in the booth by the wonderful Hannah Pendlebury. Uh, and we'll see you later. TV.